Okay, so we're in FOL. I've taken attendance. First thing I want to remind you guys is we have a test next week. Um, the bulk of this test is going to be just starting a WordPress site like we've been working on the last couple weeks. And if you go into the week five content here, so down to week five, which I'm already in, there's a whole module for test preparation. Okay, if you click on this link, it'll tell you everything that's on the test. Okay, you're gonna get a little more time than that. I gotta adjust that a little bit. But, um, you're also gonna have a component uh, on the test that'll be, this part of the test is only gonna be worth 15%. You guys will have a 5% written component. That'll have to do with the various things we've been covering in class. If you've been coming to class, you'll be fine. But this is what you're going to have to do on the test part, okay? Right here. So it's all listed there in FOL. So you can just go to FOL. Everything is in there. This chunk, which is set up for my other class that takes the same test in a later week, shows you basically how to do the entire WordPress part of the test, literally. Like, the video is there, and then at the very end of it, You'll have to export the database for me. Otherwise, I can't mark it. That's how you'll be submitting this. You'll submit your root directory in the database. And that's something we haven't really done yet, so I'll demonstrate that today. And then here's the rubric for the test, like the entire test. So this will all still be marked out of 100. It's just the test that's actually worth 20% in this other class that I teach will only be worth 15 in yours because you'll have a small written component to the test that has to do with, again, Similar to the assignment you guys are going to be doing um, for the blog posting this week. And if you're watching this video now because you didn't come to class, I'll be posting a separate video that gives you instructions for the assignment, and we are extending the due date. So week five primarily then is going to be covering uh, our week five WordPress stuff, which will fully prepare you then for the test. And then there's some theory and conceptual stuff that will we'll slip back in there next week because of the uh, the early class today that I'm recording now and then everything else you have to do for the assignment I'll be sending you in a separate video all right so I have these notes already opened up uh, they're right here before we even start working on them and this will be the first thing you want to do for your test first thing you want to do is make sure ZAMP is up and running before you come in to take the test next week make sure ZAMP is working okay it, you don't want to come into the test and realize that that's the time when you have to get me to fix ZAMP question Oh, is something wrong? No, there's not. Oh, good. Um, no, make call, email me, and you guys know if you Google me, you can find my cell phone in about two seconds. Just if it's right before, just call me, email me, call my cell. I'll come early. I'll make sure you guys are taken care of, because it's one of those things that, and usually it's something literally that I can fix in like three minutes. So it's not like you're gonna walk into the classroom. I'm gonna be like, all right, open your laptop, start, and I'm not touching them. I'm not looking at them. Like if Zamp's not working within the first 10 minutes of class, I'm sure we can resolve that, but you need to make sure it's working. So on a PC, okay, you find the ZAMP control panel. You can just search for it in Windows 8 or 10, just like I'm doing in 7 here. By the way, if you're running ZAMP already, it might be down here in the, in the, the task area where it shows all the applications that are running. If you go to the control panel three or four times, it'll actually keep popping up in here three or four times. It doesn't mean it's running, it's still just running once. I just want you to be aware of that in Windows. On your Mac, it, it won't do that. But um, So I already have it there. So I'm going to go here and make sure I click Start to get my services up and running, OK? If I do that, uh, then when I go uh, back to where I was here to localhost, it would work. If I go to localhost and it doesn't work, that's because ZAMP's not on. And we've gone over at nauseum the reasons I'm forcing you through this local hosting process and the difference between remote versus local and why it's an important skill to have if you're gonna call yourself as a professional marketer somebody who can also do a bit of web design because everybody's using WordPress and if you're gonna be able to move a site, change anything in a database, do anything remotely more complicated than just clicking a button, which is the way most remote hosts allow you to set up WordPress, you're gonna to need to understand this environment. So first things first, it's not working. Okay, well, that's because I haven't started my services. So as soon as you do that, 
Start, start. It will work. My computer is having a little bit of trouble catching up on itself because I'm recording right now. Um, on your Mac, uh, it often does turn these services off for one reason or another. I'm telling you guys you should turn them off when you're not using Zamp. We've really only been using it in class for right now, so you don't need the thing running all the time. Okay, so on your Mac, if you were to go, um, I don't think I have a little icon here, or maybe I do. The little gear icon, which was in last week's notes. It looks like a little gear. So I'll just explain to you. So on your Mac, which I can't demonstrate, you go into the Applications folder, not into the C drive, and inside the Applications folder, you would see the folder that says ZAMP. And inside of that folder, there's a really small little, it looks like a bike gear, like a gear icon, like a gear with cogs. That's what you click every week to bring up the control panel on your Mac, which is looking a little bit different than it does in the PC, but it's still quite similar. And then you would turn your services on. You don't need the FTP service on your Mac. You don't need FileZilla turned on on your PC either. It doesn't, it's not necessary. You just need these two running and same on your Mac. And on your Mac, depending on the operating system, they might have a bit of a different name, but you need the SQL and the Apache environment. They always have to be running for this to work. Okay, if Apache's running, you'll actually be able to get to the local host homepage, but it won't let you go to PHP, my admin. Okay, so then once we go here, and I can close this up. I don't need Explorer running. Once we go back into localhost now, everything will be working. So if you had just Apache working, you'd get that far, and then you wouldn't be able to get here if SQL wasn't running. So a uh, little bit of advice. If, if it stops working on your Mac, and this, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen right before the test. That's, that's how it always works. Restart your computer. Usually that's the number one thing on your Mac that will fix it. If it still continues not to work, for some reason you may have developed um, issues that you didn't have before, which can be fixed using the link in FOL from week three. Uh, not that yet. We already did that. Um, week two, right there. Fixes for Macs with newer operating systems. Okay, so there's, there's sometimes reasons why SQL won't work, why Apache won't work. There's a code that you can put into the terminal here, and then there's some code you can change in a couple files, and that video covers it. Odds are you won't have to do any of that. If it's not working and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it, just restart your computer, go back to the little gear icon, get it up and running, it'll probably work, okay? On your PC, it's simple enough. You just get this up and running. If on your PC you are one of the students that had to use a different port, you will actually access the thing we're accessing every week by going localhost colon 8080. And you'd have to do the same thing on the test. So is there anybody in here that's using 8080? I think everybody got on the regular port. Okay, good. It might be somebody that's not here today, but so once you get ZAMP up and running, which it should be an automatic thing. This should not take up time at the beginning of the test. This should just be a given. You're going to go in here. You're going to make a new database. So I'm actually going to start off this lecture right before the week where we're doing the test, showing you how you would start the test. So you go to databases. OK, you create a new database. I'm going to call it um, Super Awesome Tests or something like that. Whatever I tell you to call it in the test is what you call it. And as you're going through, super awesome test. As you're going through this series of steps, I'm gonna have you taking screenshots. So don't rush through things. Be careful at the speed at which you're doing stuff. Okay, I want you to take a screenshot right now as you're creating the database. Now, if you create it by accident and you forgot to take the screenshot, and then you go back here, you could still take a screenshot of the database area and I'm still going to see that you chose the right language setting and I'm still going to give you credit for that. Okay, you don't have to be, I'm not that picky about it, but if you insist upon doing it right, if you just created a blank database, you could just go and drop it. If you name the database incorrectly, I will take points off. So you should drop it, go back and name it correctly. It's actually super dash awesome dash test. Now that's not necessarily the same name I make you use on the test. It could be anything. I'm just demonstrating to you, it doesn't have to be something like this. You can name the database anything you want. Who had a question? Does somebody have a question? Okay. 
and you always choose that language setting because we're in this area of North America and that's the standard language setting that we would use. Um, if you were using a remote host, they would automatically know based on your account where you were setting up from and they'd, they'd apply the language setting automatically for you. So we hit create, we've made a database. As soon as we do that, we go to FOL and we download a WordPress installation package. So for the sake of the example in this video, I'm gonna to go to wordpress.org again, but for the test next week, you will be downloading it from FOL because I don't necessarily know, well, your test will be different than everybody, so there's really no way anybody in your section could have seen it beforehand, but I use a special WordPress installation package where I've changed a bunch of the files around a little bit, so I know if anybody's brought something in ahead of time, which would be relatively impossible to do with the way I give the instructions. So you'll go to FOL and get that special install. It'll be just like this one. It, it might be, have a different name. So I'm going to grab it from here this time. On the test, you'd be getting it from FOL. And the instructions will tell you exactly what to do. Like, they're very specific. I'm just going to put this on the desktop. You know, and like I said, the one you're getting from FOL may not have that name. It may be named something else, okay? It's already downloaded. Do not go inside of this and cut this out of there in Windows, okay? You need to properly extract it. If you don't properly extract it, you could end up missing a few files, which happened to two of you, I think, on that side. Must be that side, some curse going on with unzipping. And this is why I encourage you guys to get WinRAR, W-I-N-R-A-R, or WinZip7, which are just better versions of going here, right-clicking, and just going Extract All. That's the Windows version. By using WinRAR, which is like the pile of books here, I can extract here. And instead of having to extract all inside of a folder by the same name the zip was named, it will extract the WordPress folder directly out of it. So I'm going to explain what I mean in a second. There's all these little tiny things that screw people up on my test. And I feel bad about that because the, these things shouldn't screw you up in the test. You should set the WordPress site up in less than 10 minutes, and then you're just building for the rest of that part of the test, right? You shouldn't be screwing around with things like that. So what I meant was if you extract with Windows, right, if you just go extract all, which if you haven't installed another version of like zipping software, compression and extraction software, this is the only option you'd have, not cutting or copying out of the zip, which technically speaking does usually work. But if you have a slower computer, I found that if there's anything more than even 500 files, something always goes wrong when you copy out of a zip. And on a Mac, you can only uncompress. You can't do that. You can't copy out of it. So on a Mac, it just, it will automatically uncompress if you try to copy out of it. And some of you on your Macs, it will uncompress it for you when you download it, which is fine too. So you can see using the Windows version, it takes longer. Okay, it's still going, it's still going. All right, and once it's finally done, you're going to see a different situation as well because what it will do is inside of that folder I had another folder zipped up named WordPress so what it does when I go extract all is it extracts all but into a folder with the same name as this just unzipped so then you have to be aware that that is not what you put into htdocs okay this is what you put into htdocs you always put the folder that has the admin content includes in it. That's that the folder right above it is what goes in there. So if I give you something to unzip on the test and I've deliberately buried it like four folders deep, I'm doing that to test you to see that you know you need to get down to the, the root level directory where right below that top level folder you see these three things. I'm probably not going to do that, but just in case I do. Rich. Um, so if you right click on the zip you get from FOL, you can extract all and then it will unzip it into a folder by the same name as the zip. If you have WinRAR or WinZip7, it will give you the option to extract here, which will just extract everything from inside the zip onto the desktop, which in fact is just the root directory. I'm only showing you that so you know there's different ways to do it, but also so you don't screw that up because you need to put, and when I give you the test, it won't be called WordPress. It'll probably be called something else. I'll probably have it named something else. Or, or I'll, I'll leave it named WordPress and tell you, you need to rename it. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm just telling you all these different things I could do, right? But when you get to the test, 
if you knew of all these, you're going to be able to do the one, right? So in this particular case, I'm going to have you name it um, Thursday Test. That's a terrible name for a root directory in terms of describing what the website's about, but this particular website is going to be your test. So I might have you name it something like that. If you're watching this video or you're here in class with me now, don't assume that you're going to come in here next Thursday and name it Thursday Test. I'll probably give you something else. I don't want you to memorize stuff. I want you to understand you can memorize the steps in the process but you should be able to apply whatever names and whatever knowledge you have to these steps at any time so we're going to call it thursday test it doesn't matter that it's not called wordpress and then we take it and we put it into that folder inside of the xamp folder which so on your mac you go to applications you go into the xamp folder and where am i going to put that root directory which folder in xamp we did this at the beginning of the class come on what is it H, what? HTDocs. HT Docs. Good. HT. Well, yeah. It, it sounded like you said it. <laughs> HT Docs. So we go into C Drive, Zamp, HT Docs, paste it in there. Okay. Now all we have to do is connect that one file, and the the site will set up. We're up and running. We can build our pages, build our posts, build the menu. It's all done. Okay. What is that file? It's in this root directory. What am I? What am I going to open here? WP, obviously, they're almost all WP. Config sample. Yes, WP config sample, good. And hopefully, you followed my lead for the first few weeks of the course and you put in a quality text editing program. On your Mac, most of you have brackets. On your PC, you could have brackets or Notepad++. Either one of those is gonna be way better than using Notepad. And you go in there and you have to alter these three things, okay? Now this is gonna be the same as it was before. I'm not asking you to set up a new database user. I showed you how you could do that if you wanted to, but I'm not asking you to do that. I just say, you know what, keep using the root user with no password. I probably won't even tell you that on the test. I'll just expect you to know that. Because if your computer's protected, you know, you're not using XAMPP in an office setting with a bunch of different people. You don't have to really set up a proprietary user for XAMPP. You can just leave the root user privileges in there and just put in root and clear the password. Notice how I don't get rid of these little quotes. And then here you put the database name, which I'm going to go back and uh, check because I, I already forgot what I, I named it. So go to PHP my admin databases. It's a super awesome test. Okay. And you should be able to copy that out of there. I'm pretty sure with an extra space, make sure that's not in there. Super awesome test, that's the database. Oh, wait a minute, Mike, what was Thursday test? That was the name of the root directory. And they very rarely will have the same exact name. You can give them the same name if you want, but you're not going to on my test. Okay, you go down. If you're on a Mac, you could also do this at the same time. Um, I usually have you do it a little bit later, the instructions, but remember that thing we had to do last week? in order to get the Mac to stop asking you for the FTP password and username and stuff. You go down here and you just put that code in the bottom. So if you go to FOL, I'll have these codes prepared for you. Uh, you won't have to go fishing around for it. Like that would have been in week, uh, week three for us when we first did that. You won't have to go fishing around for it in FOL. It'll be in the FOL area where the test stuff is. But everybody on a Mac will have to put that in there so they don't have to deal with that permission thing. And that just goes right in the bottom. You can do it on a PC too, just for best practice. It's fine. And then you go file, save as. It'll prompt you to save it back in the same place in the same folder, but you take off the dash sample because the file that every server, like every host is going to look for is wp-config. Whether it's a remote host or a local host, they're gonna be looking for wp-config to connect this WordPress installation to a database so it can run, so it can work. So I, I save that as WP config. Assuming I did everything correct, I go to localhost. If you happen to be on localhost 8080, then you gotta make sure you keep putting the 8080 in there. Forward slash, the name of the root directory. So what a lot of people do on this test, and I've given this in other programs, um, you guys are getting it in a bit of a different way because it's worth a little less and then you have it like a written part, but they get so stuck in what we've been putting there during class 
They just keep putting the same thing and can't figure out why it's not working because they memorize things. They didn't, they didn't understand the steps. So what goes here is the folder that we put into htdocs, Rich. That's right. Very good. And what did we do? What did we do last week in this section? Did we leave, did we leave it named WordPress or did we call it something else? Go into htdocs. What folders do you have in there? Yeah, we did leave it named WordPress. Okay. Yeah, I think we did. Um, I think I showed you other examples, so I could show you that you could rename it whatever you want. But I think for the sake of the notes and stuff, the main demo we were using was called WordPress. So one of the other things I ask you to do on the test is I ask you to take that WordPress folder and stick it somewhere else on your computer during the test and actually take a screenshot of that folder for me just to show me that you did that. Because that way, every time you guys try and go localhost slash WordPress, it won't work. I do that on purpose because, it, that sh because right away then, you're going to be penalized by losing time because you don't understand what's actually being done. You just memorize things you put in address bars. You, you need to know what's happening here. There's a, there's a root directory that's connected to a specific database. You can't connect the new root directory to the existing database. Everything has to be new and fresh. So I go there, I hit enter, assuming I put everything in correctly in the wp-config file, I get to this screen. If you're on a Mac, it will likely bypass this screen and go straight to the setup screen. And if you're on a very new PC that has the kind of language settings that would tell um, Zamp in the browser that it already knows you're on English. You can choose English Canada too, by the way, if you want to. Uh, but don't choose another language for my test because I only speak English, so I'm going to have a little bit of trouble. If, but you could choose English Canada. Continue. So if you're on a Mac or a very new PC, then you, you would have ended up probably right at this screen. You wouldn't have had to choose the language. It would just detect it and know. And then what, it, what you put in here is what, exactly what I tell you to put in there. If I tell you to put in there like um, uh, airplanes for dummies, and that's the website we're going to make on the test, which isn't, but whatever, that's the site title you give it. If I tell you to make your username test, make your username test. And if I tell you to make your password password, make it password and confirm use of weak password. Don't make something else up because then I'm going to have a hard time grading it. Okay, I, need, I can grade it just by opening it, but I need to get into the dashboard too. Uh, put your email address in there however I tell you to put it in there, right? So, and then install WordPress. It's exactly the same thing you've done like four or five times with me in lecture now, over and over. That's the beginning of the test. So yeah, XAMPP needs to be working, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Then you go make a new database, download a folder, stick it in htdocs, connect wp-config, which is made from wp-config-sample, and then you, you resave it under a new name. Click this, and you should be, uh, don't worry about that, you should be up and running in less than 10 minutes. Now, I'd be lying to you if I told you that my students in the other program that have this test, you guys gave me really quick answers today when I told you where is this, where is that, you know, um, where are we going to put this information? And that was great. Okay, however, if you're not paying attention to these details, you could end up sitting there for like an hour going, localhost, super awesome test, which is the name of the database. That's not going to do anything. That's not going to go anywhere. Or you keep trying to use the old root directory. Or in the wp-config file, you went in there by accident, I'm going to open that back up, and inside of this space where you put the database name, you put the name of the root directory by accident. So just pay attention to what you're doing. You guys know how to do this. All you got to do is get past that first little bit. I will be here as your proctor for this test. I will field legitimate technical issues, but if you come up and say, it's just not working, I'm probably just going to tell you to keep trying it again. So I would practice this a few times, the process I just went through. Yeah, Rich. So since we already have it all installed, uh, will it like create a double effect next No, no, no. I could keep installing a new WordPress installation over and over by just continuing to add new root directories in htdocs and creating a new database in XAMPP. Your test is not going to be called Thursday test, yeah. nor is the database going to have that name, nor are the themes in the install going to be the same. Everything's going to be customized so that you have to do it in the test. But 
No, you're not going to double up on everything. It's the same. Okay, I'm glad you asked that because this is. Yes. Yeah, and and but, I'm. You asked a very good question. I felt like I kind of, uh, blew through this last week like a little too fast. I want to go show you again this this whole remote versus local thing. Like when I go into my remote host, which happens to be GoDaddy, you could be using whoever. And if you go to the web hosting area control panel, it's going to look kind of similar. That's not why I'm going in there though. I'm going in here to show you something else. So as a local host, ZAMP, there's other programs that do this too, but ZAMP as the local host has a folder set up where all your live websites will be in the local host. It's called HD Docs. As a remote host, I have a folder where all of my live websites will be. It's called public.html or public underscore HTML. Almost every remote host server, their HT docs, and I'm doing hand quotes now, HT doc is public HTML. And inside of there, if I actually had a WordPress site up at the main domain, you'd see WP content, WP includes, WP, just like the one I just set up. So if I go in here, WP admin, WP content, WP includes, every WordPress site has these basic components. And as you add more to the site via themes and plugins, you may start to build up a lot more folders. So here I have this main domain, mrmikesloan.com. Now I have nothing set up at that domain. So this would be like local host just loading up this. I don't have a website set up there. So local host loads this up, the dashboard. Um, this is like local host for me in the remote host. It's, it, you have to uh, associate some domain with it. I have a bunch of domains, okay? If you only had one, this is where your website would load up. And when you, when you looked in the um, public.html folder, that's actually your root directory. That's not necessarily the htdocs of it. That's your root directory. htdocs is like the whole folder that, that GoDaddy's given you. So public.html is like your root directory. Now, as soon as you have subdomains, they go into their own root directories. So this is um, a WordPress site. This is also where I had an HTML work shop set up for my other section. You didn't do that, but see, WP admin, WP content, WP includes. And it's associated with a different domain, but if I went to that folder instead of the actual domain, okay, it still loads up the WordPress site. Now there's no page associated with this because I haven't made a front page in this. This is, um, a theme for my brother that he's gonna he's got some learning conference he's going to in Europe so I gave him the domain so he could set up a custom website it just has to be set up for the conference and if he wants to keep doing it that's fine but so this is just a theme and and we picked a theme for him that, that we thought might work for it and then it's it's there um, if I go to professorsloan.com it'll load up the same website okay it's just in that folder so the question that Rich asked in terms of local host, this folder here, which is my public.html folder, um, and technically speaking, this is like htdocs for me because I keep dropping in different WordPress sites. That's your main root directory. htdocs would, base, would be the home folder. This is actually htdocs. And then inside of that, public HTML is my main root directory which I happen to have a ton of root directories in it because I have all these domains. And you, we'll work on all that stuff right after the test on how you can have multiple domains and connect all this stuff. So in the computer, localhost, this is like my main root, and then I can have as many root directories in here as I want. But if they're WordPress sites, they just have to have a database, okay? So you're not gonna double up. You just, well, it would, have an issue if you try to name the database the same exact thing. That database WPDB01 that we set up with WordPress there, that's that way. That that's connected to this site. Unless we want to get rid of it, it's it's that's it. You're not going to change that to another site. Now you can export a database and import it into another place and then take the root directory and put it where it's supposed to go and then reconnect the two in another location. That's how I grade your tests but you're not gonna double up. That was a great question. Um, okay, so once you're all set up, you, you get to this screen. Now, again, some computers, some Macs, not usually a PC, but some Macs will, will blow right past this screen, or they, 
they'll just show you the W and they won't show you this window here. A lot of Macs do that sometimes. I don't know why. It's like they think it's a security thing, which means you can't just go right to the login screen from there. So what? We know what the login screen is. We go to, well, don't look at that because now, now I'm giving it away. Uh, we go to the main domain, okay? Airplanes for dummies. How do I log in? What do I put there? Forward slash, the same thing every time. And you can't put wp-admin. That only works if you're already logged in. It takes you to the dashboard. What do I put if I'm not gonna log in? These are the really simple things you're gonna have to know when you start the test. It's WP something. Ah, damn it. <laughs> and it was on the screen there for a second, come on. WP dash. Good. The fastest reader in the class got the answer right. Okay, good job. So you, all of that will still be the same. You'll name the root directory differently. The database will be different. I might not set up the default theme as the 2017 theme, but you're still going to log into every WordPress site. By like all the sites that I have set up in my domains, like if I go to that one I just set up for my brother and I go wp-login.php, it'll go to the login screen. Looks just like it does on your computer hosted locally. So that is the beginning of the test. That's what you're doing. Okay, and I'm not even going to bother going in there. I'm going to go back into the one we were already working with last week so we can continue working through these notes. So now, um, we have to still get you comfortable with a few more things before I would say you're completely ready for the test. However, if you want to see what the test is like and you go into your content, okay, and you go to week five, all those links there, like one of those, as I already mentioned, is a full video that was done for the other, but it's the same test. It was, I don't, it's not exactly the same. Like the, details are going to be different but if you get the processes in that video you will be good to go on that test okay now um and it, it that's the topic list that's the video and then exporting the database so we're going to go in uh I have that stuff open for ocmc we're going to go into here Okay, and you guys should all be able to log into your dashboard. Remember we made the, the username AdWord, admin, AdWord, admin, and the password was password. Everybody comfortable with that? Everybody in? Okay, WordPress forward slash WP dash login. And we did do, everybody's root directory in here is WordPress, right? Okay, now if I recall, I've been using this th same setup for other sections too. If we go into themes and we go add new, and you might have to do that. I'm gonna go, go fairly swiftly here because this is review. Um, I think we are using that theme in this section, were we not? The foodies theme, install. Okay, should have no issue with that. Now, if you're on a Mac, just because you did those codes for this WordPress website does not mean you're automatically going to be able to install with no issue for the new one. So in FOL, I will also give you those codes. So you remember this from week three? So you'll also have to install some permission codes into your terminal that allow you to get into the new root directory, which will not be WordPress. It'll be whatever the name of the new root directory is. So you would just replace this with the proper name of the new folder, but I'll give you the codes anyway. You can still just cut and paste them and put them into the terminal. This is only if you're on a Mac. PCs should have no problem just installing it. And those of you installing that today on your Mac should have no issue either. So we had that theme up and running. I've kind of gone into the themes folder and showed you how all that stuff works. I went into the Yoast SEO plugin, kind of the anatomy of that and showed you how that works. Um, so we had gotten pretty far last week, but we hadn't really set up a basic site structure. So I'm just kind of flying through and doing stuff we've already done. We've already installed plugins. We've installed themes. This is no big deal. We've gone through the settings. We've gone in and out of the dashboard extensively. But we haven't really set up a site. So setting this up um, with the theme just activated, okay, there's a few things you're probably going to have to do, and you have to do something similar on the test. Like you're probably going to have to go into pages and at some point I probably want you to get rid of the sample page altogether 
and start adding new pages. So you can do this without having to create a bunch of content in the pages and stuff like that. You can just add the pages one by one. Just So let's say I wanted you to add the following pages for the test into a website. Okay, so add new. You would add a page called maybe the name of your business. I think we were like the Weber Barbecue headquarters of Southwestern Ontario or something. On the test, I'll probably make it as simple as something like home, which is a terribly optimized title. But this test is not about that. This test is about just showing me that you can go through this process and create a quick site. Later on, you get all the content filtered into it. The process of setting it up should, should take a very minimal amount of time. Um, you're not doing anything where it's going to be live and you're trying to keep it secret or something. So you can hit publish. Okay, and then you got to keep going add new. Don't keep typing over that and hitting publish, all right? You got to keep adding new. So let's have an about page. I'm going to do the, the totally generic crappy page names for the test because it just makes it easier. Okay, let's do a contact page. Uh, wait, forgot to hit add new. Always make the new page. Let's do a contact page. Let's do like a services page, and then I'll probably give you a couple other like custom pages you'll have to create there. And then one of the pages will connect to your blog role. Okay, and in the example we're going to use in class here, we're going to call that recipe. Okay, recipe. Recipes. Uh, that's about, yeah, that's right. Okay, so if I go to all pages now, you could see I've made a bunch of pages. So I'm going to leave that on the, on the board here for like three minutes. Okay, I just I want to make sure you guys make all these pages before we move on. Now, um, we haven't spent a whole lot of time in the page environment. So before we go to posts, uh, let's just go to the home page. Okay. Now, last week I talked about screen options, and I mentioned when we installed the Yoast plugin how if you have this plugin, which we never activated this time. Um, hang on, I'm going to run over there and activate it. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed that was only on the screen for a split second, but when I had the screen options up for the pages just then, okay, for the home page, you didn't see any options to pull up any of the Yoast, uh, the, well, it'd be the Yoast module that goes on the screen. And now you do. Now I, it's automatically turned on, but it's just, um, it's a place you can go where a variety of things can be done, particularly this. Okay, a lot of themes that you may end up getting default to allow comments on everything. And you may not want comments like on a home page or a static page. So if this is checked, you can uncheck it, right? But if you don't know to go into the screen options and turn on discussion, you wouldn't know to do that. So there might be, there might be a question about screen options, maybe. Um, but mainly, I'm going to ask you to create a bunch of pages and then put some content in the pages. So for the sake of this example, I'm actually going to go and get some lorem ipsum. This is not what you would be doing on the test. You would actually create a little bit of content, not a lot, just a little bit. Um, lorem ipsum is like gibberish text. Like it's, uh, it's mainly used, it's apparently based on Latin, but it's mainly used to just fill space for desktop publishers so they can see what things are going to look like even without the text being there. Where'd, we lost Rich. What happened? Hmm. Okay. So let's do a bunch of paragraphs. We don't need them all. Okay. I put some content in there. Okay. I'm, I might ask you to do some headings. Like I might say, give me a heading one. Give me a heading two. Now, has that, have any of you noticed that I have this extra chunk of tools across the top here on my edit page. Do you guys have that? No. no. Okay, so I'm going to show you something. So that comes from another plugin. So plugins do all sorts of different stuff. Like we have plugins that allow us to put a variety of things on pages in a certain way. There's photo sliders. There's that chat thing I have on my website. There's different, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there's a variety of different weather widgets and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, this is a plugin that will do something in the background. So your end users would never see the result of this, but it makes the process of you creating something in HTML or doing some basic codes a little simpler. 
It's called, so I'm going to update that page. If you jump over to plugins, you could get this. It's called Tiny MCE. So if you go to add new and search for Tiny MCE without any spaces, it should pull up. It should be the second thing it pulls up. Now, I already have it installed and activated, but you guys should do that. It's a good, it's a good one to do. I'll probably ask you to install some random plugin on the test, okay? And you would literally get points just for installing the plugin and showing me that you can do that. It might be that one, it might be a different one, but that's one that you should use. Okay, so back to this home page. So let's say I make a heading one. So tiny. M C E all one word, no spaces. Okay. And then maybe I had a heading two over this paragraph. It's good to use your hierarchy of headings. It's actually good optimization. Not as big of a deal now as it used to be, but it's still important. Um, Let's say my key, my focus keyword in Yoast here was Weber barbecue, right? I, I would keep reusing it in a natural way wherever I could. You don't force it. You always do it in a natural way. Okay, so I mean, I, I'm not going to do this for every page. I'm just kind of building up some content because we never really got to that last time. And then let's say I wanted to put like a, a picture of a Weber kettle in here, like the, the kind of the original barbecue or some Weber accessories. Um, and I might tell you to go and actually find something like this online. Typically, you would have graphics set up from a business. You wouldn't just go pulling stuff from Google because there are copyright considerations there that need to be made. Um, for the sake of an example, I am just going to grab something online. Um, oh, that's cool. A Weber Camp Barbecue is kind of neat. Let's grab one of those. I have a picture of that, so that could be considered an accessory, I guess. Um, now, typically when you're naming, which you won't have to do on the test, but when you're naming uh, images, it's good to have like good keywords in there that describe what the image actually is. Let's say I wanted to put that in here. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this because we never got into adding media last week either. You can go to the media library here and you could add things like 10, 20, 30 pictures at a time. Or if you're in a page and you know you don't have the picture in there yet, you can individually add it right into this text, like right into the context of the page by clicking this. And either one would get you to here, but you can't, I think when you're adding, oh no, you can upload multiple files too when you're in a page. You can still grab multiple files. WordPress is very user friendly. So I'm gonna grab that barbecue. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that when I go down to put it in, it gives me options of putting it in in different sizes. Now this was a pretty small image to begin with. If it's a larger image, you usually have three different sizing options, which is really cool. So that's how you insert media. It's that simple. You just, it, this is why a content management system based website is so nice to use because if you were coding all this in, you'd have to allocate the, the, the image into a folder, then you'd have to set up the folder path in the hyperlink. And it, this is just way, way easier. So I'm actually going to use just the thumbnail of it. And I'm going to insert it into the post right where I'm at. Okay, now that didn't work out that well because the way I set it up, I'm literally like right in between this chunk of text and this chunk of text. There are different ways to align images when you're bringing them in with content. Okay, now you guys haven't really learned any code, so it would be difficult for you to go and code this into your CSS, but WordPress has this built into almost any theme you're ever going to get. If you click on the picture after you insert it, you have different ways you can align it. Right now, it has no alignment. So it's sitting in there like a letter, like a character in the line of text. If you align right, what it does is it uses the code that's already been created to put that picture and have the, in the right side and have the text just run around it. You can do the same thing with left. You can have uh, a line center, which will just make it its own, basically its own space. 
But I think with smaller images, when you're inserting them right into the text, it's kind of a nice thing to know that you can do this just using the WordPress functionality. You don't have to code it. You don't have to go and edit the CSS. It's easy. So we inserted an image, okay? So I'm, I'm probably gonna ask you to do something like that. Insert some media. And you could do it right from the media menu, okay, by going here. And you could insert, you could bulk select, you could insert a variety of things and then choose one of them to put into a page. Or you can insert right in from the page, like as we were here. Any questions? Yes? For the guy who went out for a smoke and a coffee, coffee. Um, we just inserted an image into a page. So the page is white space, right? You can just put text right in there. Okay, we inserted an image into the text by going add media. We picked it up. Now, I already have this in there. We had to go to upload files, select it. We grabbed it. I downloaded it from Google. And then once we put it in there, you could actually pick different sizes because WordPress will automatically create different size options for you, which is really powerful, by the way, because when I used to run full HTML sites, I used to use Photoshop. I was constantly making all these different versions and sizes of my graphics to use in different pages because you can resize it with the code, but then the, the browser is still loading up the full size image, even if you've made it smaller uh, to appear smaller. So here, WordPress is actually making you the smaller images, and then you can just put them in there, and it won't have to load up a big one. Um, so you will likely have to put in some imagery, and it's that simple, and you can also add it directly through here. Uh, so let's pretend that I did fill up these pages with a bunch of random content, and that I also went to posts, and I added some content to posts. Okay, so in posts, I would probably have you delete the post you made, and create a few different posts about different things. So this particular website, I think we were pretending it's about airplanes, so we could do like um, a post about the London Air Show. Just like creating pages, like it's very, very similar. There's different options within the modules in the surface here, but you're gonna optimize it the same way with Yoast too. Which Yoast, I know we had that little crash course introduction to it. We'll deal with Yoast more um, in my preparation video for assignment one. Uh, because as you guys know, I'm going to be ending class early and I'm going to set up a video for you that you can watch anytime and it'll just be due anytime up until the test next week. So for this, uh, let's do another one. Um, what's the company we have in London that actually manufactures airplanes? Um, no, no, uh, but they do make jets and stuff and I think they do it. No, it's um, something aircraft, uh, Diamond, Diamond. Isn't it Diamond Aircraft? Yeah. Uh, in the news or something like that. And then, um, so maybe there's some changes to getting licensed as a pilot in Canada. You get a post about that kind of stuff. You can post about all sorts of stuff, okay? You do not have to use the blog functionality or section of the WordPress website as a blog. But the reason it's so powerful is because it automatically catalogs everything you put in as a post into your WordPress site. And then it's, it's organized it via the database in a way that where you, it, it, your blog roll page, so these, page, these posts I just made will automatically come up on the blog roll, right? And if I put some more content in one of them, you'll actually see the content preview. Hey, now, I've, I've made some stuff, and there's, there's more we got to talk about with posting, and I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, let's go look at the site. So you can see here, I have two, I thought I made three posts. Oh, I did that same thing in the last one that I said not to do. I just overwrote the title and didn't add a new post. So new post, add new, add new. Okay, I think I had something about uh, diamond aircraft. You wouldn't just randomly be coming up with reasons to post, by the way, you'd actually have content in them. This is just for the purpose of showing you how WordPress works. So now, 
when I go to my site, I can see right away that the homepage for this particular theme that I chose is the, uh, wait, when did I do, oh no, the airplane thing was the, the quick demo I showed you for the test. This is a site about Weber barbecues. So those posts make no sense at all, by the way. Um, we can go back and fix that in a minute, but this is the blog roll. The main page is currently the blog roll. The home page, which has been allocated into some menu somehow, actually does show home. Wow, I, I haven't seen a side menu theme in so long. This is actually a pretty interesting theme. Um, first, I'm gonna go back into the dashboard, go to posts, and I'm gonna change these posts all to things that have to do with Weber Barbecue. So we could do, um, uh, the art of smoking. Anybody ever smoke any meat in here? Mm -hmm. Not the art of smoking cigarettes, Rich. The art of smoking. Yes. <laughs> You've smoked smoking meat? meat and fish too as well. Oh. No way. You've smoked your own fish? Did you, with a custom smoker or like a Weber smoker? Or? Uh, custom smoker. I wouldn't use Weber. Weber's garbage. Weber is garbage. Yeah. That is blasphemy. From where I come from, yeah. That's okay. Stuff. <laughs> They're like buying the Weber bowl. Okay, for a smoker, yes. But for a barbecue on your back deck, that's not the cheap stuff. That's. Yeah, that is. Right on, probably, yeah. What would you recommend? I'm just curious. Uh, Wait, Broil King? Don't tell me Broil King, because they're owned and made by Weber now. You must have just come across a cheap Weber. Because Weber's not necessarily considered. Why Weber? Especially these uh, travel ones and these garbage. Okay, well, yeah. Whatever, I'm still going to make a post about why Weber is better than Broil King. Um, and then another post about uh, the best seasoning for pork chops. I don't know. You could, like, you could go, if you had a store retailing barbecue accessories and gourmet barbecue types of food and things like that. You could just be blogging all day long. I mean, I did have the blog set up as recipes, but now I might change that because I'm realizing I could, I could write about more than just that. So now when I go here, you could see it's set up as a grid. Oh, still got those other ones in there too. Now, why do I not see a picture here? Because I haven't really gone over this yet. This won't be on the test. So most blog posts allow you to set up your blog roll and it will come down in like a, a, a row of things. Like if I go to my own website, for example, um, and I go to the section that I've named, what did I call my blog? Uh, tips. Okay, I have photographs for most of my blog posts that automatically appear in the blog roll. So this is just a, a traditional scroll down from the top type of blog roll. This food theme we got is actually kind of cool because it gives you like a, um, a grid sort of layout. Where the heck did we go? It gives you a grid layout. Uh, did I go right off my... Uh... The reason you don't see any pictures is because of this. So if you go back into the dashboard, go back into post. Now, I generally I don't use this unless the theme calls for it for a certain reason. I don't use this on static pages. But when I'm doing posts, I typically will always insert a featured image. And the featured image for this post will then appear in that grid. Okay, I'd already uploaded that one. I didn't need to do that. I could have gone to the media library and got it. Okay. Oh, that's expensive. Okay, well, that, that's like, yeah, all right. Talk later. <laughs> so there. So now you see the image actually set up as the featured image for the post. So this this will be a little different too than most blog rolls will show like the first few sentences or something, and then you can click to read more. The food grid thing for a recipe is just showing it to you in a different way. And if you don't like it, you pick a different theme. That's the whole thing we were going on about last week. You pick a theme that's appropriate to the content. So we've now created a site, which I know I've kind of crash coursed you through this and it, it's basically just a site with um, a bunch of posts and a bunch of pages. And you'll notice that on the front page, 
the posts are still allocated as the landing page. Under settings in reading, as I showed you last week, you can change this to manually decide which one is going to be the landing page, the front page, and which one is going to show your blog roll. And as soon as you do that, when you go to pages now and try and edit recipes, it will tell you, hey, you're not gonna, there's no point doing any editing in this page because it's the blog roll page. That's where the content will come from. However, you can still optimize it with Yoast. You can optimize a page that technically has no text content in the page with Yoast because it's better than not having the snippets at all. Because if you don't, remember, if you don't give it an SEO title, nothing will come up in the SERP or in the SERP, the search engine results page, it'll show just the beginning of the one post and that's it. You need to go, you need to take it a little further than that. Um, okay, so that's that. That's gonna have to be done in the test as well. Uh, when I go here now, I see it's set up a little bit more traditional. Like this is a weird theme. The side menu is not necessarily the going, the, the norm, so to speak, with the WordPress theme. Um, but you could see all of my static pages are automatically in the side menu. How come posts didn't show up in there? Well, because they're all in the blog roll for recipes, okay? Um, so if I go into the dashboard again and I go to appearance menus, you're gonna see where you can start to create this. So by default, and it depends on the theme, by default, if, as you start to create static pages, almost everything will start to build them into a menu. And it will build them into the menu in the order that you made them. 99% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to make your own menu. So you may get into a situation with a WordPress site where it's sort of pre-made the menu for you here with the theme and you have to name it and hit create menu. Or you'll get into a situation like this where it's just nothing's in it at all and you have to build it. But it doesn't mean that other menus going to go away. It won't until you create this menu and make it your primary menu. And some themes come with different menus that you can have in different places. This is just a standard menu. So we're going to call it main and hit create. And again, I want to remind you, you, you may come into the menu section and see that they've already given it a name for you and they've already put a bunch of stuff in it for you. It doesn't mean that it's not still using just the default WordPress menu, which is just adding the pages as you create them. So this is gonna, you could make this the top header menu or the footer menu. I'm gonna make this the menu. I'm not gonna automatically add any static pages to the menu. I wanna be the one to do that. So I'm gonna add all these pages, put them in there. And then with my mouse, I'm just gonna take the, the page and put it where I want it. Okay, and if I want services, to be a, a child page to my about page. Here, hang on, I want about to be second. I'm gonna drag that back to the left. I want services to be there, but I want them to be a child page. And you can keep making pages. This'll build you a drop down menu without ever having to code anything. It's super, super simple. Okay, so in the about page, I'm gonna make that the sub page. I'm gonna bring these back. Contact can be its own page. Under recipes, let's say I wanted to link to specific posts, even though the posts are all gonna show up there anyway. I could bring the posts in um, as items in my menu and make them, I know they're not pages, but they can still be linked to, okay, as sub items to the recipes. I know they're not actually recipes, but that's, so you're gonna need to build your own menu Click Save Menu. So, you, so everybody's going to get to this part in the test. If they're running out of time, they're going to just look there and be like, oh, yeah, I got a menu. Yeah, sort of. But you don't really have a menu if your, your menu is not out of order. And that's, that's interesting. Wow. So this theme doesn't even, this theme isn't even set up to allow you to do um, dropout menus. So if you're encountering stuff like this, you can already go to Appearance Themes and just switch themes which we could do together now if you want to. Now, generally speaking, you're gonna put a lot of work into a theme and a lot of time, and you're probably not going to end up switching themes once you get one set up. But if you're just starting, and you're just trying, trying things out and seeing what you like, you could definitely just go try another theme. I, I, I'm not 
crazy about side menus. Um, I don't know, any of these could work. Food hunt. Fooding. It's kind of a funny name. Let's, let's try that one. Fooding. So I go and I activate it. Now, the first thing I should check is I should go back to menus and see if it's already screwed around with my menu. And it hasn't. A lot of themes will wipe that menu and you'll have to rebuild it. That's why you have to be care careful about just randomly switching themes whenever you feel like it. Okay, I'm going to click Save Menu, uh, which was already saved, by the way. And I'm going to go back here. And you're going to see here, see how it created those drop downs? So why didn't it work before? Just the theme. Well, can I just code into that theme that I want to that I want to do that then? Because I really like that grid layout. Then find a plugin that'll allow you to do stuff in a grid layout and use another theme. Because for you to code that kind of stuff in is going to be a nightmare. I'm just trying to give you guys the right guidance in terms of how to choose the right themes. So, and I've got the wrong thing up here from the other section, but that's because I'm, I'm building all this with you guys at the same time. They're a little, they're way behind your section, but. This would say, well, it shouldn't say that anyway. As soon as you get a site set up, whatever generic stuff you had in there at the beginning, you would change under the general settings, all the stuff we went into last week. This would be the Lucan Gourmet Barbecue Shop or whatever we made it. You can make your tagline um, best source for Weber, Southwestern Ontario. Set your time, set stuff like this. I might ask you to go in there on the test and change some settings. Hey, how do I keep getting back to the site? We went over that last week too. Anytime you want to see the site and what it looks like and you're in your dashboard, go in the left corner and click the logo. Okay, and you probably notice when I go in the left corner and hover over it, it gives me the option to visit site. Click the logo, click visit site. Either one takes you to the site. If I want to go back to the dashboard, go back here, just click it, and it takes you back to the dashboard. However, from there, I can also choose to go into different parts of the dashboard right from there. Okay, so. Uh, we've made pages, we've made posts, we've created a menu. Don't let it auto create the menu, especially on the test. Go in and force the menu to be created. Even if you go in and the theme that I chose already has everything sitting there in the menu, it's just prompting you to actually create a forced menu. It, it doesn't mean it's actually done it. It's probably still just taken everything and stuck it in the order you made it in, in the menu. You need to create it and make that your primary menu, okay? You also need to make sure you check whatever box it has there to check to make that the primary menu, or you will lose a bunch of points on the test. Um, so your notes from this week, we have now gone through, um, there's a bunch of other stuff in here, but the second part of the notes we've done here, uploading media, inserting the post, changing the aspects of it, um, Installing widgets, displaying widgets. There's all sorts of different stuff in here. Okay, so let's say I wanted to put a YouTube video in a, in a page. You don't have to embed or, uh, wait, sorry, you could embed. You don't have to upload or record the video. In it. So YouTube as a platform that, that is, a, is a great video server. I mean, it's a great place to host your videos. You don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Okay, you could put your videos on YouTube and then put them into the pages where you want them to go. Okay, so if I was going to, and I'm just thinking of things I gotta do because your test is gonna be different than theirs. Find something on a Weber barbecue, right? So youtube.com. And I'm very easy, at, you would spend a lot more time like curating your content um, if you were launching a real site, but There's the little camp barbecue. Look at that little guy. Okay, let's use this video. Um, so if you go to a video and you've uploaded it yourself, you, you would have all the options to share, embed, do whatever you want. If you didn't upload it, you may not have, um, no, they do. So you can embed or share here. Um, and they just changed the way YouTube looks, by the way. So the share button's a little further over to the right. And if you take this link, and you put it directly into WordPress. Knowing what you know about WordPress up to this point, let's put it into this post. Uh, 
Which I gotta go to post to do that. God. So go to the post. Go here. Okay, let's just put it into the post. As soon as I put that text in there, it automatically recognizes that as a YouTube video and it loads it up in the size that it feels it should be. Now, if you're not okay with that size, you can go into the text editing end of things where you would have to know a bit of code, but not much. Watch this. Instead of using the share link, you would use the embed code. So this is how I learned to do a lot of stuff when I was building HTML sites. I didn't have to write up 99% of the code. I would just get everything from, from different resources online. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, I'll go to W3 schools and they'll show me how to do it. And I'll just copy the code and change around the colors and stuff. Oh, I don't know how to get a YouTube video to play. And they're all, you don't have to. You just go to share. And if they've allowed you to embed it, there'll be an iframe code up at the top. If they haven't allowed it, it, it just won't show anything. So I can go copy, paste that into the text view, not in visual. So visual is the full WYSIWYG view. Text view is your code view. And then I can adjust. So let's, let's update it and let's view the post. Okay, so that's how big it looks right now. Okay, let's edit the post. I wanna make it even a little smaller because I'm gonna have like some text alongside it. I'm gonna put it in a table or something. You can adjust the size of it here by going, let's make it just 400 wide and only 275 tall. Update it. I know what you're doing. <laughs> View post. Notice how fast I see how it's smaller now. See, so you can manually change the size if you use the embed code. If you use the share link, you can put it right into WYSIWYG view, but you don't have to do anything. You literally just paste it right in there. On the test, I will ask you to do one or the other, and you'll get points off if you don't do the one I ask you to do. Okay, remember how I, I got back into edit post really fast last time? It's because it's anything you're on when you're logged into the dashboard, you can edit directly from there by just clicking the edit button. WordPress is very, very handy, everything about it. Okay. Um, so that was one of the things we missed in the notes there. And the notes, as usual, I don't sit here and make you drag you through the notes. The notes are there to show you what we're covering. Um, the only thing we haven't done up to this point uh, till we get to the blogging stuff are widgets. So we haven't spent a lot of time on widgets. So widgets will appear in the sidebar automatically of the blog roll page. So if I go to recipes, there'll be a, a lot of sites don't have the sidebar on the home page. Now I see the sidebar on this home page and I really don't want that stuff there. Okay, so if I don't want to see that stuff there, I can decide what I want to put there um, by going back into the dashboard and going into the widgets area and editing that. There's, different themes do different things in different ways. I don't really need the meta. I'm going to leave the categories there. Maybe I don't need archives because I haven't posted enough. I don't have any comments yet. I'll leave the search box there. I think that's useful. Maybe I want to make like a custom widget like that just I can put whatever I want in there. And if you put a text widget in there, and this actually accepts HTML. So I can put a text widget in there and give it a title, call it um, Daily News or something. And you could do a hyperlink in here to um, Weber Barbecue Competition and link it to like the Weber site. It's good to link to reciprocal sites. Now, if you don't know how to code it, most of these themes will have ways to insert hyperlinks. And this is the same way you'd insert it into a post. You'd look for that chain link. So I'm just going to link it to the Weber homepage, um, which I'm guessing is WeberBarbecue.com. Weber Canada, okay, whatever. And you need the HTTP in there, everything in front of it, okay? Now notice, that's just a standard site. And it's now secure because most of the bigger websites have already switched over. I haven't bothered to switch mine to secure yet. I haven't had the time to do this stuff. But as I mentioned last week, as of October 1st, Firefox and Chrome, not just Chrome, are notifying you. See this? They're even notifying me that the, my local host site is not secure. <laughs> but if I was to go to my website, see uh, here, refresh. Weber, Weber. Uh. OK, 
okay? Secure connection, right? So it has information in there and it's just, this is where the web is going. Like we have to make everything secure now. Might be a money grab, I don't know. Um, so you can make a link like that in there. Now when I go back to my home page, you could see it's only the stuff I left in there now. Why didn't that link work? That's weird. Did I not save that? Widgets. Open a new window. Hit save. I don't think I hit save. There we go. See, you got a link in there. So I didn't cover that actually. If I wanted to edit this page and I wanted to make a hyperlink to something right here, for example, go back to visual. Don't do it in text. You don't know that code. You didn't learn that. You don't have to. Highlight the text you want to link to. Hit the chain link, link to the spot. So if you want to link to something um, in your site, it'll bring it all up and you can just click on it and it'll set up the link to it. If you want to link to an actual domain outside of your site, which would be considered an absolute link, you would go in here and type in, you put the HTTPS address right in there, or HTTP. With the, Triple W is not necessary, but depends on where they have their site resolving at. That's how easy it is to make a hyperlink. Okay. Creating a menu, we went through that, went through that. All right. Now, blogging. I don't want to just brush over that as like, oh, we did a bunch of posts. Cool, cool, cool. We did a bunch of posts. The whole idea of blogging is analogous with a better optimized site because you're always updating it. Okay? You do not just brush off the fact that WordPress makes it super easy to continuously add content and also categorize everything you're doing. So there are categories and tags in WordPress, and I will go through some of these notes briefly. So a blog is actually sort for weblog, and it's basically a chronicle of stuff. And you can use this for a variety of reasons on a website, updates, um, what's new in the store, recipes, whatever it may be. Okay, many blogs that focus on a particular topic, web design, home staging, sports. And then within that broad based topic, there's gonna to be different categories. So if you had a blog on, sports is pretty broad based. Let's say you had a, a blog on um, lacrosse. Okay, you, your categories might be like professional, recreational, um, you could have men's and women's lacrosse. You could, you could be writing about different, I mean, there is professional lacrosse here in, in, in Canada and the States, actually. It's pretty exciting to watch. I've seen it a few times, but yes. Check out my, what's that? Check out my blog. Yeah. What's your blog? Oh, use blogspot. Okay. Uh, give me the beginning of it one more time. I, I got Now, delay they, they allow you to, to categorize and tag in here? Yeah, which is another reason you like to use WordPress. Um, okay, so is, is the primary thing here like, um, native relations, history, what are we talking about here? Uh, reconciliation. <laughs> That's pretty much the entire site. What are they going to do about those, uh, what do they call those schools? Oh, that's not just schools. What the heck is going on there? Just a thing in the past, trying to get past it and uh, create self sustaining uh, reserves and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so so it's, it's, it's a blog about, I guess, the Canadian government's involvement with natives, reconciliation, making things right, communicating relationships, 
whatever it may be. So let's say you're going to do that in WordPress. This is actually a really good example. Um, let's say this wasn't about barbecues. Let's say this was about something else, like native relations. So you would never leave your post as uncategorized. By default, everything you make is going to be uncategorized. You're going to want to make categories, and then specific to the content in each of those posts, you can use tags, and tags don't get in your head that tags are more specific and categories are more broad. That's not really what's going on. Tags are just specifically identifying something in that particular article. And tags might be really similar to the category itself, or they could be, so if, if you look at an Instagram account like mine, for example, you could see that stuff in action. So if you look at my personal Instagram account, you can see like family, sports, I would just call it kiteboarding because that's, or that's kiteboarding or surfing is the only thing you're going to see in there. Uh, real estate and fan shop, right? So you'd see these, these different categories in there with, with really in my personal account, there's nothing real estate. There's other fan shop stuff in there. So you would categorize it. Like if Rich was doing native relations, but there was, so I think reconciliation could be a category. Is everything, single thing you write about reconciliation? No, it's just the one Yeah, okay. So the, Oh, okay. Um, this is actually kind of hard because I don't I don't know the topics that well. So there's um, uh, taxes. I don't know. Do they, does that stuff change for you guys ever? Like uh, you people, self you like that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is great. Um, why, why not? Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Um, and you know, I, I, I want to say I applaud Canada for their native relations compared to the United States, but I really don't applaud either country because I don't think either country really recognizes what happened. I mean, that would basically be like me coming into your house and like, hey, yeah, this is my house. Sweet, I like it. Which actually legally still happens in certain states. It's really weird. If people have not come and visited the house or checked on it for a certain amount of time, oh, it's crazy. There's this whole, I, there was a show about them. But there is a way to legally get them out, too. There's, it, you, it has to legitimately be, be abandoned. And then they can't have title to it unless they've actually been there for a certain amount of year, like years which none of them have been. This has nothing to do with native rights. This is just, this is just uh, idiots in Florida doing dumb stuff, but yeah. Um, so that's good. Um, let's, yeah. Uh, Township sign has these, um, living. Like that could be, right? So, so these could be broad-based categories. And within there, you might have something that came up in one of them. I don't know how to spell that guy's name even. That's shameful. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think I had it right the first time. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, I, like you could have, yeah, reconciliation. Exactly, reconciliation. So those would be tags, right? And you don't put them in, by the way, with a hashtag. You just type it in. Okay, and add it. So this whole part of WordPress, this whole part of WordPress, which, which by the way, Tumblr and Joomla and other like ma major market blogging CMS type of website platforms also use, gives you another area where you can optimize and just, just build and build and build for your, for your readers. Okay, so this is what our assignment is about this week. So if you go through the rest of the notes, you'll see me trying to explain that it's about a main content area, you can have feeds, it's about a, a way for people to kind of keep up to date and you can have it all set up in a way that's chronicled and in order with the most recent on top and the oldest on the bottom and you can decide how much stuff you want to post in, on the main blog roll page. You can do 10, you can do 12, you can do smaller. There's all these different settings in there. And then it talks about creating the post page Okay, and then we create some posts, and we've already done that. Okay, posts every, okay, so tags. So then tags and categories in WordPress, okay, 
Um, and I don't even really get into categories here. This is what I want to show you. And I, I only really show you here with the tag area. If you go in here now, all the categories I just made will have their basically their own page. So when I go here to view, this will be a page in my WordPress site that will show me every post that has to do with that category. So you go category and you name the category. You could link to this page in your menu and it will just custom. So there's so many uses for this. You could customize. It's like a filter, right? You can use categories to completely filter different content in your site for people that want to look at different stuff. Okay, so category, and they, those would be the more broad-based stuff where you can also do the same thing with tags and show everything that had a certain tag. So each of them will each have their own page. Uh, I must not have added those tags. I never saved them yet. Is there stuff on WordPress to track, like, uh, clicks, click-through rate, bounce? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Well, you would, you would want to use analytics. And if you want a, a better way to watch, like... Here, so when I log into my site, and I talked last week about the, uh, the main page of the dashboard, how as you, as you install different components, see, see how Yoast is here now? That wasn't there before, but as you install different plugins and different things, it will add different functionality to that main page. Um, if I go into my site, I have a couple different analytics plugins that are running on my site that are tracking user behavior. Okay, some themes just come, come with them. Um, I have a, a feed that I actually pay for that tracks anybody who's responded to anything on my site and it gives me their information and it shows me how many times these have each been viewed. And then my analytics dashboard actually has, well, and you can dig deeper into this. We haven't gotten there yet, but there's yes. The answer is yes, but not before the first test. This is all stuff we can get into later. Um, Okay, so based on that information, you could start to create. So a blog post, here's the thing about a blog post. A blog post has to have enough information in it that it, it, it fills people in on a certain topic. Um, so I was going to all these meetings last fall and writing about this stuff. It's the only time I've ever really blogged. And you'll see the way I have my posts set up. They're quite long. This is actually longer than your assignment will have to be. There's lots of links. There's lots of different size headings. Okay. And throughout the post, there's certain things that keep recurring naturally in the text to explain something to someone. Then there's, there's pictures in the post and they have keywords associated with them. So I, I just showed you guys how to, how to put images in, but I haven't actually showed you how to add alternative text to the images, which is just done right there. So when the search engine searches for imagery, it, it can't read anything out of a pixel, right? It actually sees that coming out of the post. So if I scroll down, 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 and I get to the section of the page on Yoast, which is right here, you'll see that I've actually gone in and made this the main focus keyword for this particular post. It was my first post on it. Then I, then I got more specific. So I've had that going through each of the components in SEO, and I can read my mark here. So part of your assignment will actually be to write this post in the, you're gonna submit it to me as a Word file, but you're also gonna write it inside of your WordPress dashboard, and you can make it whatever about whatever you want. But I need you to have a focus keyword and a topic, and I need you to actually run that throughout the site. So when I, when I gave you that Yoast information last week, I showed you how to do that in the video I'm gonna create for the assignment. I'll show you again how to do that in the video. Um, so that's everything I was going to cover today for WordPress. And then I was going to do some conceptual stuff and then show you the assignment. That went a little longer than I wanted it to, but that's because of the people that we were missing and then Thanksgiving and everything, that's going to be it for the lecture. And then there'll be a supplemental video that will show you the assignment. Question? Um, using the PowerPoints that you have up there, will you be able to walk through it? Can you just do it pretty much? Yeah. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah, but it would be even better to watch the test prep video because the test prep video actually, the PowerPoint slides don't tell you to make, go make five pages, go make five posts, and then it just tells you how to make a page, how to make a, you know what I mean? So they're, they're to walk you through the basics, and then my lectures show you how to just keep going with that.
Oh, yeah, what happened there? Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. 